have this uh, small uh, power supply. It's out of a uh, um, HP KVM switch, uh, 16 port KVM switch. Uh, cost around 500 euro uh, to replace the actual KVM switch. And uh, for each adapter, then for going to each computer, uh, it's a hundred uh, around hundred euro uh, each. So to sixteen, that's sixteen hundred uh, euro plus the five hundred. So you're talking about the guts of two grand to replace the system with a different brand. You'd have to keep to the uh, the HP brand. Um, some of the other brands don't they, their adapters don't work. This KVM switch is not uh, for a, a server, it's for wind client P. Um, uh, this KVM switch is uh, for uh, PCs, uh, not servers. So they do need the adapter. Um, okay, it's rated at, um, let's see, the model on it is um, DSO 142L. And the input is, ranges from 100 volt to 240 volt AC, uh, 50 or 60 hertz, and you have a 0.7 amp draw on, on it, maximum draw, I would imagine. Output is plus 5.1 volts at 2.4 amps, and minus uh, 5 volts at half amp. Okay, right. Let's have a look at it and see what we have, and. Um, I'm going to have to have a look. Let's have a look at through the uh, microscope first and see if there are any uh, loose connections or dry joints or anything like that. What we have here there's the uh, main uh, switch and um, chip control IC, and uh, we should have our transistor then I would imagine yes the three pins of the transistor FET whatever you want to call it and down here then we have our main smoothing capacitor well it looks like a little bit of a ring around the smoothing capacitor there that doesn't look good um, and you got a lot of we have another one there we've got quite a few poor solder joints on it um, uh, same over, I don't know if you're getting it, you've got them here. But I don't think it's the issue, but uh, however, I'm going to solder all this up first and see what happens. Uh, you never know. I'm not going to show the soldering process because it'll be quite boring and long. I'll get back to you when I've uh, got them done. Okay. I've done a bit of solder in there and uh, I haven't cleaned it up yet and uh, the flux is still on it. I'll clean it up when I'm finished and um, you might ask why some of them are shiny and why some are dull uh, that's because it's a mixture of uh, leaded solder and unleaded solder and uh, if you come up here the ones that are real shiny up this side uh, were uh, capacitors that were replaced by someone previously with leaded solder so um they are quite shiny everything else is soldered uh can't be that kind of a dull effect so we're not going to worry about that and uh, what i have is i've got two leads soldered on here at the end if we uh, but I don't have um, all this has is two wires really soldered or uh, soldered in and they've got spade type connectors that go into a plug on the uh, KVM switch itself now let's have a look at the top see is there any burnt components that's our diode we got two diodes there and uh, Okay, we have something there. Right, that looks like our chopper transistor of FET. Let's 
secondary side. If you can see the length of them legs of the capacitors, uh, that's really, really long. I don't know why they're so long in it. Uh, what in 470 and look how close the legs are to that the diode look don't know if it's picking it up or not uh, okay obviously that was a capacitor that was too big someone tried to squeeze in there and left extra long legs uh, be able to fit it in there it works but uh, it's not ideal right I'm going to now uh, plug it in and just measure some voltage just to see what I can see on the primary and the secondary side see is there anything uh, make sure I don't have any solder shorts on the uh, uh, power supply Just got to plug it in now and let's hope it doesn't go bang. Okay, it's in. And uh, let's go to our voltage mode on the uh, power support on the uh, meter. Okay, 333 volts there. A bit low, but depends on your meter. <coughs> zero volts on the outputs. Zero volts on the outputs. Okay, what have we got? Okay. Next thing you have to do is find the collector, the equivalent of the collector on the uh, plug it out and check again. Okay, it's over that side. So we have three pins over there. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Again. Uh, on the negative side of the reservoir capacitor. Okay, we got 333 volts there as well. Now, what I have to do here now is see if we got a short now on the primary side somewhere and see if we got a um, startup voltage on that chip. That's the next thing I have to do. This should be. How do I do this without bleeding across in my. Uh, Okay, we have a. Just see, we have some kind of a diode there. That looks like a. Okay, we got seven point eight volts there at that point and uh, is that low let's see the capacitor here well, maybe that capacitor has got low in value we could have a so I'm going to just use a bit of heat on this and see what happens I'll pause this and I'll get back to you. Uh, I just put a little bit of heat on it, and uh, sometimes when those capacitors go low in value, um, it doesn't allow the power supplies to start up. Let's 
go to our capacitor again. I might just replace that and see. Make it the easiest thing to do rather than wait. See, it's a little bit large, but uh, for uh, test purposes, it'll do. I don't have a diagram with this. Uh, some of them have a feedback uh, from the uh, main chopper transformer through a diode and a smoothing cap to start up and put it. Uh, it, uh, when it starts up, um, it, it uses a, a series of resistors first to get it going. But uh, let me see. Okay. Let's give it another try. Plug it in and see what we got. Minus five and plus five volts. It was that capacitor. Uh, right, that's that complete. Um, I'm going to change this capacitor and uh, you know the, the mains uh, spoon capacitor. I'm going to change that as well. There's a bit of a uh, bulge on it, but uh, yeah, it can be cheaply done. Uh, but success. Uh, what do I say? I thought it was going to be more involved repair than that. And uh, at the end of the day, it was this capacitor. Let me just. It looks like one of those cheap. Uh, capacitors you buy uh, in a component store or online and uh, for, you see 47 uf 25 volts um, that's about right uh, it says 105 degrees but look I don't know I get buy capacitors like that I've got them before in the past uh, from component suppliers uh, I try to deal with uh, radionics nowadays uh, because I uh, they have a reliable uh, supply. I hope um, it hasn't failed on me yet. Uh, I get good quality capacitors often. Um, I find uh, if you order on eBay, uh, AliExpress, or any of those places, you're not going to get good high quality 105 degree capacitors designed to work in uh, high frequency chopper power supplies. Um, they were just you'll see a bulge coming out of them first up here but this one here had dried out over the years probably and uh, I don't know how long it's in there because yeah, these uh, uh, switches do be in a very clean environment in a, the likes of a data centre and uh, you don't see any dust on them or any dirt or grime they're spotless when they come out um, but uh, that's a fix. Uh, thanks for watching.